Hi, Lynette here again. Thanks for joining me to complete my discussion on calculating inventory cost flows. The example is taken from Horngren's 10th edition. It's exercise number... Let's put the 6 in there to make it look like you're at 617. 6 identifying the chapter. Exercise 17 from page 404. And our requirement is to complete a perpetual or a perpetual inventory record using the weighted average method of cost flows. We're going to continue on using our example we used before with the November 2nd purchase of 8 gallons, a November 16th purchase of 2 gallons, a sale on November 8th, on November 13th another purchase, and on November 14th another sale. And when we do these sales, You'll notice that we need to crunch the inventory to one layer and average total cost over total units available. We'll do that when we calculate the cost of goods sold on November 8th. And again, we'll do it when we calculate cost of goods sold on November 14th. Um, calculation of cost of goods sold is slightly more complicated using this method. So I've added a column to show you how I did the calculations because students have kind of a hard time following it if you don't show them. I don't believe you'll see any kind of column like that when you complete this problem, but you'll need it to see how I do my numbers. For our example, go ahead and record the purchase and the inventory on hand from November 2nd. And you can see nothing's changed. I recorded the November 2nd purchase of 8 units and showed my inventory on hand just as I did in the other examples. Now go ahead and record the purchase of November 6th for me. And as you can see, there's not much different on this one as well. Let's look at what we have. We have a November 6, November 6 purchase of 2. And then when we go to the inventory on hand column, we now have 2 layers. 8 units at $2 each, or, and 10 units at $2.10 each. So we have a total of 10 units at $20.20. The 8 plus the 2, and then the 16 plus the 4, 20. Anytime you have a sale, you need to know what your average cost per unit is. And so you can see our next transaction is a sale. So we're going to know what our average cost per unit is, and we'll cost it out at that, and then we'll have one layer remaining in ending inventory of whatever was left at that same average cost. Because we have a sale, we need to calculate our average cost. So I'm going to take my total cost, which is $16 plus $420, and that equals, go oh away, $2020. And I'm going to take my total number of units involved, which is 8 plus 2, that's 10 units. And I'm going to divide the total cost of 2020, total cost divided by total units, and I get down to an average unit cost of $2.02 .02 for everything involved. It's almost like I have one layer now that's 10 units at $2.02 .02 each, some of which is going to be sold and some of which is going to be left on hand. Of the 10, three units will be sold at $2.02, .02, and seven will be remaining. Let's get that entered on our worksheet. So, we just decided, when you take your total cost divided by your total units on hand, that the average cost of this entire two layers of inventory is $2.02, .02, three of which were sold using the $2.02 .02 for a total cost of 606 
and there were ten and we sold three so that leaves seven at two dollars and two cents for a total cost of fourteen fourteen and notice that whenever you do the calculation of cost of goods sold you drop everything to one layer that's an average and that's what sold and carried forward three of my ten units were sold seven of my two ten units are left average cost 202 that wasn't so bad I think showing the calculations helped what do you think huh, let's move on now we have another purchase on November 13th go ahead and record that so we record our November 13th purchase of two units at two dollars and twenty cents for a total of four forty and notice what we have in our ending inventory layers now we have seven units at two dollars and two cents for a total of fourteen forty and two units at two dollars and twenty cents for a total of four four so our average of seven units carried forward and we added a layer for our current purchase anytime we have a sell it triggers an averaging of these so you know what you sold on the average price and what was left and notice what happens on November 14th we have a sell so let's figure out our calculation for how that's going to work and then record it let's calculate our average price before we attempting our sell I blacked out the numbers above where we calculated our average price price just so you won't get confused we can focus on this one right now we have two layers of inventory seven for price of 1414 and two for total price of 440 so we take the 1414 and the 440 and we see our total available in price is 1854 and we have units seven and two total of nine units available so I add the seven and two and come up with the nine and what you see here then is my total cost of 1854 divided my my total number of units giving me an average price of two dollars and six cents a unit so I will record this cell using the cost of two dollars and six cents per unit as my cost of goods sold price and I'll use the two dollars and six cents as my ending inventory price I'm trying to show you as much detail in inventory on hand as I can so you can follow the calculations when you fill out this part of the inventory record on my accounting lab be sure and follow the approach your author uses and it's demonstrated in the textbook on the perpetual inventory record weighted average method which in Horngren's on page 373 in the 10th edition if you're using a different book or a different edition it will likely be somewhat different but I think what we're doing is um, probably the clearest way to show you so let's record our sale back to that sold four gallons so we need to enter our date and show what happened so on November 14th we sold four gallons and the four gallons average price was two dollars and six cents per gallon for well, four times two dollars and six cents is going to be eight dollars and twenty four cents as a cost for that sell and then we're going to have how many left well we had nine and we sold four so we're going to have five left in ending inventory and it's been crunched down to one layer at an average price of two dollars and six cents per item and five times two dollars and six cents is a value of ten dollars and thirty cents in my ending inventory back that up so it lines up there you go that is then how you calculate the average price 
In the first two rows of this, I showed you the detail of how I got the 1854. It's the price that's totally available. And the second row showed you how I got the nine. And then you take total available in dollar amounts divided total available in units for an average price of 206. And if you look at the array of data that we're looking at, 206 kind of makes sense. All right, done with that. Not so bad. Go ahead and show me the totals, both in quantity and dollar amounts, for the purchases column, for the cost of goods sold column, and for the inventory on hand column. Come back and let's see how it looks. So, for our totals, let's see if I can get this right. Oh. That's cute. So, for our totals, for purchases, we have 12 units on hand of 2460. That's been the same in all three examples. What also has been the same is the cost, or is the number of units sold, but what's varied is the price of total cost of goods sold, depending on if you've used FIFO, LIFO, or weighted average. It's $14.30 for weighted average. And our total on hand is $5 for a total of $10.30. And that's at that $2.06 price. In this final example, I showed you the calculation of the first cost of goods sold in yellow and of the second in red. So you can go back and review those. So weighted average has a little bit more math going on. Every time there's a sale, you need to average what the total cost is per unit. So you can do the cost of goods sold and inventory on hand correctly and then use that number going forward. Thanks for joining me. This one was a little longer. Appreciate your patience. Um, in my next podcast, I'm going to compare the results of the three methods. Thanks for joining me.